Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Madeline from the Dribble team here. How is everyone? You guys excited for this workshop? I'd love to hear where everyone's joining from. I saw some people coming from Brazil, and I'd also like to know what time it is where you are, whether anyone's joining at a crazy time like 1 a.m. to learn live alongside Jefferson. 5 p.m. Florida, not too bad. 10 p.m. for someone, 11 p.m. Well, thank you so, okay. I think I just saw 2 a.m. <laughs> thank you so much for everyone joining. We've got a real international bunch. Use the chat to get to know each other. Um, post your portfolios in the chat, post where you're joining from in the chat. We love to keep these sessions super engaging and super interactive. 3.30 a.m. for someone, amazing. That's dedication sure is hello from the ukraine awesome well welcome all we're so glad to have you here with us today for our first in a series of three holiday spark ar workshops we couldn't have booked a better person to teach you the ins and outs of creating holiday effects with spark ar than our buddy all the way in brazil jefferson arujo you're in for an awesome few hours of learning and creating alongside some of the best in the Spark AR industry. But firstly, I've got a few housekeeping notes. So listen up and we'll get started in just a few minutes. Firstly, like I said, get, use the chat to get to know each other. We're one big creator community here. So um, we love to see where you're joining from and see the work that you create. Use the question and answer panel to ask your questions. So you'll see in the question and answer panel, there's also the ability to upvote other people's questions. So you can um, click on the upvote. The more votes a question has, the more likely it will get asked as it raises to the top. Um, during Jefferson's demo, it's gonna be a pre-recorded demo, but please do keep asking your questions and throughout the demo, we'll be answering your questions in the chat. The session is gonna be quite interactive. So there might actually be a chance for you to come up onto stage with Jefferson and share your effects and to actually get some feedback and a bit of advice on your effects from Jefferson. That might happen towards the end of the workshop. If you wanna come up onto the stage like I am right now, you could just raise your hand in the question and answer panel of the chat. That would mean that you're ready to come on stage and we could get you up on stage with Jefferson. Um, a lot of you know this, but this is the first in a series of three Spark AR holiday workshops where you're going to be creating Spark AR effects all around holiday themes. Um, we also have another workshop on the 14th of December and the 16th of December. We're going to put the links in the chat, but make sure you come to those workshops as well. They're going to be super fun. And also this holiday series is running alongside a Spark AR holiday competition where you could submit your holiday effects and win up to 50,000 US dollars. So super big prize money. It'll be awesome if you guys join the competition. We've put the link in the chat and you could submit your effects that you create today. So um, that's pretty awesome. The agenda that we have for this is um, a bit of a kickoff. And then we're going to dive into a pre-recorded demonstration of Jess Jefferson creating sweets and candies in Spark AR and make sure to put your questions in the question and answer panel of the chat while you're watching the demo. We're then gonna dive into creator pods. These are pods that are broken out by our experience level. We're gonna open the pods. You're gonna see they're gonna be a little lounge um, tab pop up, and then you could either join the newcomer or the experience level pod. And that's really an opportunity for you guys to create alongside other creators to ask questions and to have those 25 minutes to create your effects. Jefferson's gonna be popping in the different rooms. So he'll be there to ask, answer your questions as well. And if a room is full, you could still join it. You could still use the chat. You could still ask your questions, but you might not just be able to put your microphone or camera on. So please still join the creator pods, even if, the, um, if, if they're full. Um, and then we're going to dive into publishing our effects and do a bit of Q&A for Jefferson. So a jam-packed learning experience for the next couple of hours. We're super excited to have you here. If you run into any technical issues, just flag us in the chat. You could DM us. We're here throughout the whole event to help you. And if you're sharing this on social media, please tag Dribble and tag Spark AR Creators, the hashtag Spark AR Creator Days. We reshare everything we find on social media. We repost it, we re retweet it, and we love to see what you guys create. This um, session is also being recorded. It's being streamed out to YouTube. So if you want to rewatch it, it's going to be on the Spark AR YouTube as well. I've got my wonderful friend and colleague here today, Renee. 
Hey everyone, I'll be in the chat if you need anything and I really hope you enjoy the event. Thanks so much, Renee. And a special thanks to our event platform partners. Welcome along with a massive thank you to Spark AR for running this workshop with us. Okay, so that's enough of me. That's enough of housekeeping. DM us if you have any other questions, but now I'd love to introduce your instructor, Spark AR creator, Jefferson Arujo. So while creating his B, completing his BA in architecture and urbanism, Jefferson began experimenting with Spark AR Studio in mid-2019. After becoming fascinated with AR and the 3D universe, he gave up on his architecture and jumped into this new, exciting career. Millions of people worldwide have created, have used his effects, like the tattoo filter, making him one of Brazil's most well-known artists. His studio's clients include some of the world's most famous brands like Disney and Monster Energy, and of course, Facebook and Instagram and Spark AR. And we are so, so happy to have him here today as your teacher and your mentor. So take it away, Jefferson. Hello everyone, how are you? Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the workshop and I'm surprised there's a lot of people here. So thank you so much. Uh, so today we're going to learn how to make our effects more interactive, uh, make them pop between the others and also uh, making them more fun so they are more engaging. Um, Right now, I'm going to uh, play a video that shows some, some of my work, and I hope you enjoy it. While completing my architecture and urbanism graduation, I started experimenting with Spark AR. Quickly, I became obsessed with the augmented reality and the 3D universe, so I gave up architecture and started my career in AR. Millions of people worldwide have used my effects, including the tattoo filter, which made me one of the most well-known artists from Brazil. In my studio, we create experiences for the most well-known brands and artists like Pablo Vittar, Disney, Monster Energy, and Supreme New York. I can't wait to see you on my workshop at Dribble, and I'm sure you have lots of fun. Can't wait to see you there. See you soon. And so here we are, uh, and now I'm going to show everyone how we can uh, participate in Facebook's contests. Mm, I'm going to open here my Spark Air Hub and go to the competitions tab. Mine is in Portuguese, but I'm sure uh, it will be in your language or in English. All you have to do is click the join button in this page and read the, the official rules and the privacy policy and agree with them. Uh, so I have read, so I'm going to check this and click join. Now I am in the competition and I'm ready to get the holiday Spark ER assets, uh, which can be accessed through the Spark ER library inside Spark ER Studio. Uh, for participating in this contest, your effects must use at least one of the assets. So the rest of them, you, you, you can use whatever you want and then uh, create other ones if you want. And then when you submit an effect, you can use the publish form and enable competition entry. And you can enter as many effects as you like. Uh, the points are when people open and share your effects. So make sure you make your effects super eye-catching, engaging, and shareable. And that's what we are going to do today, making them more shareable. Uh, who has entered the holiday competition already? Uh, hello, everyone. Hello. Yes, I'm excited as well. Uh, this is going to be a very cool competition as it's holidays and everyone loves holidays. It's a great opportunity for showing your work because they are very shareable. You're planning to, so register. Yes, you can submit your effect and participate too. 
<laughs> Stop planning and join already. Yes, the assets look very cool. They have a lot of categories of assets. I'm sure you're going to find something you like. Uh, you don't need to be an experienced creator to join as the effects can be very simple. They just need to have at least one of the assets from the competition and you may um, you need to make sure they are super engaging so people like it and share it. Yeah, I, I, I want to see your effect later. You're making one, uh, maybe you can use a technique for your effect that you're going to learn today. Planning to create another one after the workshop, that's a great idea. I can't wait to see what you're going to create. The assets uh, will be av available on your Spark AI Studio once you get signed into the to the competition through this Park Air Hub. Have you submitted your effect already? Please let me know. You have never used Spark Air, uh, so it's a great time to get started. Today I'll cover from the basics since uh, creating your first effect on Spark Air through assembling the effect, uh, positioning the, the assets from the competition so you will be already familiar with it. And also, I can show you how to export and uh, publish your effect. Why not? You're going to use for your client. <laughs> Yeah, Spark AR is great. Uh, actually, I, I started experimenting with Spark AR uh, when I was finishing my graduation, and I never expected it to become my career. So it's pretty exciting to be here, and it has been two years and lots of fun, and I never feel like I'm working. So it's a great career. Yeah, it's very easy to learn and very democratic, so I feel everyone can be a creator. And there's also a lot of resources online so you can learn. Hey, Jefferson, shall we jump into your demo? Sure. Amazing, so we're gonna play a demonstration where Jefferson's pre-recorded it, keep putting your comments in the question and answer, putting your questions in the question and answer panel. We will answer them throughout the demonstration. Um, it's going to be about 45 minutes and you're going to learn alongside Jefferson's pre-recorded tutorial all about how to create sweets and candies effects. So let's play that now. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Thanks for attending to my workshop here at Rebo and Meta Facebook. Uh, this is the first workshop from a series of three for the holidays, so I hope you have fun today. Uh, today we're having, uh, today we're creating an effect with the theme of sweets and candies using 3D objects. Uh, we will uh, adjust the scene, create this, create the entire effect from scratch and then we will add some special effects in the end if you feel comfortable with. So I hope you have fun. Now that we are starting, I already dragged my assets into the scene. So here they are with the materials and everything already set up. I believe the, the files from the contest will come with the configurated materials, so I already did that on my end. 
so for this, I'm using the cake, the gingerbread man, the heart, the cookies, the candy, the lollipop. Uh, I believe you're free to use uh, which assets you have and also combine them to make unique combinations and different effects. You can see here that the candies are static to the to the scene, so they're not uh, they're not being interactive with what with what I do. So let's add some interaction to it. First of all, I'll add uh, a face tracker with a face mesh. So now I have a face mesh that keeps track it to my face, as you can see. I'll add a material uh, just to hide this face. It will be a retouch material. So now my face uh, has smooth skin and also my skin. Notice if you add a color load, you will lose that uh, full screen uh, is moving. So keep that in mind uh, while you're pl planning your effects. Okay, I'll move this up so it's behind my object and not in front of it. So when I add another face mesh, it will be able to, to go behind. Uh, this is happening because the rendering options of the materials are turned on. Uh, for 3D objects, it's good to, to keep them on because they can cause some problems and uh, rendering problems. But I'm not be using another face mesh. I just create this one to demonstrate what happens. Uh, we'll use the uh, face tracker to add some interactions to our objects in the patch editor. In the patch editor, uh, if you don't have it, you can go on view and show pat patch ed editor. Uh, that will make it pop uh, below. Uh, you can also show the console with important messages and the asset summary. In the asset summary, you have to keep in mind that Facebook, Instagram, and also on other devices uh, need to uh, another de and another devices like Porto need to have the projects until four uh, megabytes. Uh, so now you can see that we have a lot more than that in the textures so we might uh, need to uh, compress them so they are an, in this range of four megabytes let me hide my sweet candies here so i can show how to compress these textures so you don't have this problem later uh, right here you can click and organize uh, through bigger and smaller textures so I want to see which is uh, occupying more space on my device. It seems like the uh, or Aaron, or it seems that this texture is the biggest one. So I'll put in manual mode, and since there's no transparency in it, I can use the J JPEG option. Look, what a difference! You can also, uh, yeah, this is an HDRI that you, I will put up to download in a link somewhere. So here we can choose the textures that are the same kind and set up uh, a setting for all of them. Since I don't have any transparency, I'll put in uh, JPEG uh, since that uh, takes less space. I believe that will help uh, in getting uh, less space taken by those textures. You can take some time to compress the textures. It depends on the computer and the processor. But once you're done, uh, everything is good to go. Here's another one that I forgot. I'm done. I have one uh, dot three megabytes. Uh, that's okay. 
I try to aim for 2 megabytes for extra reach. So let me remove the emissive texture since we don't use that. Uh, here's another one. Opacity. I'm not using that too because I want my candies to be opaque. Here's another one. Done. Yeah, I think that's okay. We can try to compress it later, but for now I think it's okay. Okay, now we're going to uh, take a look at the assets we have. Uh, this is a cake. We'll make an effect where the, the objects uh, float around our faces. So let's start by adding our face tracker to the patch editor. You can do that by dragging uh, the face tracker here and you can see that there's a face finder which helps uh, finding your face and there's a face select zero is for face one if you insert one here uh, it means the second face that is captured on the camera is manipulating this so i'll keep this at zero and here are the options for face tracker from face tracker you can get the face the 3D position of the face, the scale of the face, and the rotation of the face. Once you drag this, once you drag this node, you get the possible nodes that you can use with it. And here, if you if you don't know what you're doing at this part, I recommend uh, reading this because it's very helpful. There is also a lot of documentation that helps uh, learning this, so it's faster to learn through there than trying to read here. Uh, for this, we're going to use the 3D position uh, and we are unpacking it. What is unpacking? Unpacking is separating the, the values so we can use it uh, in another way. So from here is a 3D position. In the 3D position, we have three axes, X, I, Y, and Z. And so I want to separate them, separate them. And since I, I want to, to make it move less uh, through the Z depth, that is the depth, I will div divide by two. Maybe I'll change my idea later, but that's how I'll use it. And now we can smooth here with exponential smoothing that make things move slower and softer and more beautiful. So here is the uh, node for the position that is the cake from the cake. Whoops, an error. Why is that error showing up? Because this is a vector tree, X, Y, and Z. So for this to work, we have to connect the three numbers that come from here. So I'm, after unpacking, I'm going to smooth this one too and this one too. Okay, now uh, to join those three numbers, I'm going to pack it again. And then I have another vector tree like I had here. So I can connect it again, sorry. So I can connect it again. And now it's following smoothly uh, my face. Check if I divide here by zero or by one. So by one is not divided, sorry, by zero. And for five, for five, it almost doesn't move. So I'm going to keep by one here since I don't want to use it yet. Now let's, uh, now that it's moving uh, in the way I want, I'll add a new object. I try to use the same name so I know what I'm using, cake no. And restart so it works again, okay. 
now I can move this to wherever I want. So I want this to be on the top of my hands. Let's uh, add this thing here and restart. Okay, it's in the same axis. Everything is aligned. Everything is aligned, so I can use it that way. Now I'll, I'll move it to where I want this cake to be. Maybe here. And also I think I want this cake to be bigger. It's so beautiful that I don't want it hiding down there. Look how cute it is. Here's the ambient light that you can add to adjust the intensity of the light to all your objects with physical or standard materials. You can also test here changing from sRGB to linear so you can get better colors for your objects. I don't like pure white light, so I'm going to bring it a little uh, more yellow here. And now it looks super cute. Okay. Now let's uh, do the same thing to the other objects. And the gingerbread man seems to be very washed out, so let me try to change the line here uh, much better. Okay. Now I can... Uh, Add the gingerbread man here, but I want uh, all of them to not have the the same uh, smooth uh, mov movement. I want them, uh, some of them, to be more smooth and others to be more responsive. Maybe uh, thinking about their weights to make it more realistic. Maybe. So I'm going to smooth it again this time by 500. Notice how it's not moving the same way. The cake is much faster. I'm going to add another uh, no object, this time ginger bread no. And why not create another new object for this entire uh, collection of objects? I feel no object makes uh, the life easier because it's more organized. If I want to hide all of the objects for troubleshooting something, then I just click here and everything is hidden. Okay, so I'll adjust the scale. Rotate a little bit, take advantage that this is 3D. Show it's 3D, it looks so much better. Okay, and now I can move my new objects to wherever I want. So cute, right? I love it. Okay, the heart is a beautiful object made by this Parky Art team, and I love it. Uh, the color seems to be red, so it's not very accurate. Uh, and linear looks so much better again. I think all the objects are going to look better on linear, so let's keep uh, testing. Uh, now I can uh, take advantage that I created two let me see, we have six objects. I'm going to create another variation. Exponential smoothing. This time, 900. The 
and pack it again. You can also pack in different uh, connections. It doesn't have to be uh, in the same uh, X, Y, and Z, but it will produce uh, different reactions to the object. I prefer keeping uh, it responsive, at least in the axis I want, here and here, so users know what they are doing. So let's keep things like they should be. I forgot about the Z, I guess. Sorry. Okay. See, uh, the bigger the damping here and the exponential smoothing, the smoother will be the movement for your object. So let's try to organize this uh, patch editor. You can comment around on some selecting uh, stuff so it automatically, automatically uh, makes things uh, slicker. Here is damping. 900. Let's take this divide off. I'm not using it. Here is damping 200. And here is damping 500. Now I can connect different objects to this one and it will be so much easier. Uh, another one. Another one. Now they are, they are in the same position. You can check how the, how the movement is different for them. It's not the same. The more damping, the smoother they are. I prefer a more smooth object, so I'll keep them here. Now let's create the new objects so they can move. And we can also use the add commands, but I prefer to keep things more visual. But let me show you, uh, for an example, the heart. You can add vector tree for the heart, and now you can add any value you want. Look, and now it's there. I prefer doing this uh, through the new object because I think it's more uh, visual. Let's make it bigger, reset it. And again, let's make it more look like it's more 3D. Okay, here is the heart No. See how much easier it is through the new object? That's why I prefer it. You don't have to be guessing which value you used. Uh, let me check which value I used. Oh no, I don't move through the new object. So let's do this again because it needs to be through the new object for what we're going to do later. Here and here. Yeah, this is the values we uh, will have to add in the patch editor if you want to have this exact same position. Let's uh, rename this also uh, 3D objects. No. Okay, here's the cake, the gingerbread. Let's do another one for the cookie. Like 
could be bigger. And also could be down here. And also could be down here. So beautiful. Let me check if it needs to be linear. Yeah, so much better. So much better. Another one for the cookies objects. Let's uh, position this one. Let me see how it looks. Uh, the cookies. Oh, it's that flower. I'm going to bring it down here. Oh, it's the same object as the other one. And so it's the same material. I'm going to scale it up a little bit. And also bring and also bring it up here. The cookies and the candies and everything are following me. Now the lollipop. And the other candy, I don't think I'm, I'm using them. Yeah, those ones look like, look a lot more like Christmas for me. I'm keeping these ones. Okay, let me check if the cookie looks better in RGB. Nobody could use at least a little more of lights. Maybe some directional light in pink or blue or red. Yeah, in red, I like it in red. Uh, let me try to move the direction of light, maybe through here and here. Beautiful. Okay, now with the 3D rotation of the objects, we can also manipulate that uh, according to our faces. So here is the 3D rotation. And you can see the rotation 0, 0, 0 for our objects. So uh, let's uh, let's sync the rotation of our face with our object. Uh, here's the 3D rotation. You can uh, unpack it too, and then um, and then use exponential exponential smoothing to make it look more smooth. For this, I'm going to use the same value for all the objects, so it doesn't look too random for everything. The cookies might not work correctly with that, so no, they're working. I'm going to multiply to make it look more obvious, like three. Yeah, very good. Here, the rotation of the heart, you can see that it already had some rotation. So I'm going to add vector three and I'm going to put it here so I keep the rotation that I added before and just add some more. Look how cool this is. I really love this effect so much, it's looking so cool. 
Now the other cookie also has some rotation. So let's try to keep things organized here. Okay, add vector tree and rotation. Let's copy the rotation already. Here is the other cooking. Maybe you can multiply by two to make it more soft. Yes. The gingerbread. And again, vector three. And the cake. Now you can uh, correct the starting position by rotating it again here. I love it so much. It looking so cool. Okay, now let's add some animations uh, to make it look more uh, advanced, <laughs> even being simple to do so. I'll make the object pop when the effect opens, so the effect looks more polished. So for this, I'm going to add a pose. And notice every time the effect starts, it will activate on turned off. See, it blinks. Let me zoom here again. This is because it activates every time the effect starts. Remember we made no objects before and all of them are in the same scale now. They're all one, one, one. Okay. So now we're going to use that. Uh, remember I told you also that every time you start the effect, the pulse turn off is going to pulse. So let's use that in, in this animation. And uh, every time the effect starts, the animation will play. See? Okay. Now the progress can be connected to a transition. Uh, our objects will start with a scale zero and go to the scale one. That is the 100%. And here are the animation curves. I'll add the credentic in out to make it more dynamic. So let's see what happens. See your cake. Uh, com let's add a, a, a delay here of one second. Okay. See your cake showing up. Yeah, that's because it has that animation. Cake, the gingerbreads. Okay, we have five objects. Let's add some more delay, two seconds maybe. No, it doesn't need one, one is okay. Uh, 
now here you can notice the it's not uh, coming from the center of the object this is scale that's because uh, the object is not aligned with the with the axis you can do that by moving your object to the center or uh, even better making the scale from your object but to do that we'll need to create a transition with the values that your object already has so let's do that by selecting the root object in your objects here we can transition to the scale it already has And now you can see that the gingerbread will grow from its own axis. See? Much more beautiful, right? Be careful when creating those animations. If they're not on the axis, like here, it will not work. So you can create another new object inside of this new object and just move it to the center of this new object. I think it's okay now. Let's see if it's going to work with the cookie. Not very well. It needs to be more here and then we can move it again. I kind of like this movement. Uh, it's not what I wanted, but it takes time to get used to it. So let's do the other ones uh, and then we can try this one again. Here this scale is uh, this one. So I'm going to copy it here and connect the object. Beautiful. When modeling your objects, remember to keep them in the axis. So that will make it much easier uh, for doing this kind of animations later. This probably is not going to work also, yeah. It's because these objects were attached one to each other and I separated them. But I like how they are right now. Let's divide again the, the rotation. Let's multiply by one. I don't want it to be 
rotating that much. Okay, now let's uh, add an animation with a screen tap. Screen tap. Here we're going to merge two poses. So it plays this animation when it starts and also play another animation when I want. So here we're going to add a knot. And a switch. The switch will play here and the knot will reverse. It's working. Now let's change the duration to a half second. So it's faster and also uh, the animation coin. I like elastic. But for this, I want it to be Mars mode. So I'm going to add maybe maybe quadrantic in and out. Yeah, much better. Now we can even add some delays, uh, like a half second to the cake. Uh, cookie. Then they are not happening all at the same time. They look much more dynamic now. Uh, our effect is looking pretty cute right now. We can even add uh, some more effects like with handler passes. Are you ready for it? And uh, now we're going to uh, remove our or retouch material because it's not compatible with render passes. Uh, so I'm going to add some uh, render passes tag tags to my objects. Here is the cake. Here is the ginger. Here is the cookie one. Here is the heart, and here are the cookies too. Okay, now I'm going to add a scene render pass. Uh, maybe with my heart, and add dot sub tree. So everything inside of it comes in my scene. The background will be transparent. So I reduce opacity to zero. And here we have our heart in transparent background. Now we can add some extra effects to it. 
So I'm going to check some patches from the library. Maybe facing color mix from Pablo. And maybe blur. And also adjust colors. Okay. I'm going to blur here. Another shader render pass to see how it looks like. It's not too blurred, so I'm going to blur it again. And maybe reduce the size here. Now we need to connect it to our device. Let's create a default pipeline and bring all the way here. Now we're going to blend this, the source in our destination and make it in the mode add. See how our heart is glowing now? It's because it's blurred and in the blending mode adds. Uh, instead of just adding the heart into the scene render pass, we can create another tag here and add 3D objects. Objects. And I'll change here for objects dot sub tree. And now all of our objects are glowing beautifully. I love it so, so much. It looks so much better now. Now that everything uh, looks glued together, let's add some other assets like uh, a LUT, a color LUT. Maybe in this one, we can add the cream tone. I think it looks beautiful. Where is it? Where is? It's here. Here we can add the texture and the output. It's look, it looks very moded, so I need something more colorful. Uh, let me find another one. Maybe the Ludwig. Yes, I love this one. And I'm going to add another shader. That is the... Uh, maybe the... The adjust colors. It's very simple and does a lot of stuff. Here we can change the brightness, the contrast, the hue. The saturation and the lightness and even inward the image. 
Now let's add some color while starting another effect. Let's add another pose. Transition. I'm sorry, I forgot about the animation. Transition from zero to one. Uh, from minus one to zero, actually. In circular, in and out. Maybe two seconds. Everything is more colorful with candies. So this is all. Uh, so this was our effect for this workshop. I hope you enjoyed it. I had lots of fun and also learning something new today. Even if you are a more experienced creator. And I hope you had fun. And most important, I hope to see your effect posted on your Instagram. Please tag me. I will be super happy to see what you create with this. And I'm av available and I am available if you want to ask me something, if you were stuck in a part of this workshop. And also I'll be here uh, talking to you and asking, uh, answering questions. And I want to see if you create something with this. So thank you for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next workshops. Thank you. Hello everyone, how was it? Did you enjoy the tutorial? I'm glad there's so many people here. I'm, I'm reading your comments. I see that you're very excited with it. Yeah, you're absolutely a beginner and you learn it. <laughs> That's so cool. I know that some of you are just starting in Spark AR and I hope this uh, workshop made you see that uh, some effects can be beautiful, but simple at the same time. Doesn't need to start overly complicated and you can publish it to your profile. Uh, when I started, I designed very simple effects and from there I uh, keep uh, pushing myself and advancing my, my techniques. Uh, I'm going to answer some questions now. Uh, for some minutes, and then uh, you can send your questions. Yeah, the the capabilities of uh, render passes are unlimited, so it's up to your creativity to work with it. Yeah, you can rewatch it on YouTube later if you didn't get something. Yes, you're going to study render passes uh, after this. So I'm glad this is your first experience with render passes. I try to keep it simple so it doesn't scare anyone. So I'm super happy. Uh, what was the purpose of using the 3D new objects? Uh, because I wanted to move them freely, uh, but at the same time, I didn't move the the root of the object. So I could uh, do the rotations and the scaling uh, much easier later because they were still on their axis. Let's keep the, the questions related to the tutorial uh, so you can watch it later and understand more easily. Uh, the, the link will be available later, I think, through the email or something. I can confirm it later. So you can rewatch it. Hi, Jefferson. Thank Hello. you so much for that amazing demo. I learned a lot there. I'm a newbie to Spark AR, so that was um, 
very interesting and a lot of useful information for newcomers like me. Um, so thanks for answering, answering those couple of questions there. What we're going to do now is jump into creator pods. So this is a really fun experience for people if they want to design alongside other creators and practice the techniques that they've just learned in that demonstration. So I'll open the lounge and there's going to be two different levels of creator pods. So there's the newcomer creator pod and then there's the experience creator pod. And like I said, this is a chance for you to interact with other creators and um, put into action what you've just learned. And after these creator pods, we're going to do them for 25 minutes. After the creator pods, we would love for some people to come up onto stage and show what they've created. And maybe you, Jefferson, could give them a bit of feedback and advice on their creations as well. So definitely use these 25 minutes to meet other creators and then also work on your effects. Jefferson's gonna be in the newcomer pod for 15 minutes. He's gonna be answering your questions. He's gonna be advising you and um, working with you on your effects. And then he's gonna hop over to the experience level pod. There's gonna be 16 spots in each pod, but don't worry if you don't get a spot with your camera on, you could still join the pod, ask your questions and watch other people create. So um, I'll open the lounges now and you guys could hop over to them. Great. Thank you guys.
second to uh, now we're going to uh, hello everyone uh, I'm back here <laughs> so now we're going to see how you uh, publish your effects uh, once everything is done I made some changes in the creator pods uh, those uh, effect files will be available for you later so you can check how I did the background lights and everything uh, but for now, we are going to publish our effects, the most important part of it, actually. Uh, so here, uh, there's a button to publish it. But first, let's check if we have all the requirements to post. So we go here on V. Sorry, I need to present my screen. Here we have a publish button uh, that you can use to publish your effect. If everything is okay, uh, you get two signs here that everything is ready to publish. But let's check the file sizes. Here we have two and 12 megabytes. I tend to try to keep it uh, below two megabytes, but it's okay like this. So, Let's publish a new effect and click on Upload. When it takes uh, more time, it means that some textures can be compressing. So you may uh, want to cancel it and check here on asset summary if everything is compressed already. Let me remove this HDRI because I didn't use it. Maybe let's just export here. Now let's go to Spark Air Hub. Here we're going to this blue button uh, where you can publish your effect. Here you will choose a name for your effect. I'll call this Christmas Cookies. And here you select your file. So now you need uh, an icon and also a preview video for it. Here you can choose the video you recorded for it. If you didn't record it, you can save it. Done. Now it's going to update. And here we can test on our device. Clicking here uh, will send a notification for our device. Uh, so you can uh, tap this notification and test your effect here. Now with this uh, notification, you'll be able to test your effect and record a preview video for it. Now I'm going to send this video to my computer. You can send through AirDrop if you're on an Apple device or through your email. So you make sure you don't lose quality. And here we're going to choose this file. Here are some keywords like Christmas, contest, cookies, candies, 
And here are the categories, uh, look, selfies, and uh, camera styles. We can use the, the video thumbnail, I'll keep like this. And here you can add someone who worked with you uh, in this effect. So let's type my another profile. I'm also collaborating with myself. So uh, you can add your friends and, and someone who work it with you. And here, let me check. Here you can set uh, just for the link and not being public. So you can share just with your friends or if you're an event, uh, but remember you can only use uh, 50 times if you make it only Oh, the link and here you're going to submit it here and now you just need to wait uh, for it to be approved uh, sometimes it takes one day sometimes it takes more but uh, it'll be approved soon and will be available on your profile on your profile uh, you just need to go to your profile and check the filters tab, the effects tab, sorry. And here will be available all your effects that you posted. I can wait to see uh, the effects you post, especially the ones created uh, through the techniques I showed in this uh, workshop. And don't forget to send me, I, will, I would love to use it and show the world them. If you want to, to share your work, uh, just raise your hand in the Q&A section. That's right. If we have any brave souls out there who want to share with um, Jefferson the types of effects that they've created, then we would love to see them. Jefferson, I'm sure you would love to give you a bit of advice and feedback on your effects. Just raise your hand in the question and answer tab and we'll get you on stage like I am right now and you can share your screen. If not, we could do some question and answer um, until the end of the session. If anyone's got any questions that they'd like answered, then we could put, pop them in the question and answer tab and um, we could get to them. If you want to just look in the question and answer tab, Jefferson, you could pick out the ones that you want to answer for now um, and wait for more questions to roll in. Thanks everyone, I'm open to questions. Let's check your questions here. This is the most upvoted question from Jessica. So it's got 17 votes and it's a bit of a generic question, but she'd love to know what your biggest inspirations to create your effects are. Uh, depending on the effect, I try to create a mood board and a color palette uh, to know what I want to achieve. Because sometimes you start creating an effect and you are not sure where are you going. You can end up uh, working days on the same effect and never finish it. I, I have a lot of effects like that. So <laughs> be sure to know what you want to have as a final product or you'll keep working and working with it and they'll never finish it. Uh, so for inspiration for my effects, I tend to search uh, inspiration on uh, Pinterest and Behance and even in the Facebook Sparkyard community. Uh, be sure to be there because there's a lot of amazing work and sources of inspiration there. You can check other users' technique and try to reproduce it in your own way and aesthetics. 
So I always try to uh, brainstorm and create a concept and a mood board and also focus on the message I want to give through my effect. Because effects are uh, an amazing tool for creators to create their own stories and tell stories through it. So be sure to uh, think about the story and the feeling and what do you want to uh, transmit and to, to give through your effect. An effect can give you uh, different sensations. They can be fear, love. Uh, make sure you have a story to tell in your effect. I'm 100% I'm sure that it will perform well because people love effects that tell stories by itself. Yeah, the, the specific resources, I tend to look at Behance, Pinterest, and also other creators' works. So I'm always inspired, and I'm sure that when you start participating in the Sparkier community, you get so inspired that you, you won't have time to do everything you want to. <laughs> And uh, what is the easiest way to learn how to use patches? Uh, the easiest way to learn is trying. Uh, connect different patches, see what happens when you connect. Uh, if you connect something that doesn't work, a Spark AR will give you one alert and tell you what happened. So be uh, sure to try it. Read the documentation on Spark AR website. There's everything there uh, to teach you uh, how things should be connected, how to do some, uh, even some full tutorials there. Like there's a great tutorial on their website uh, that shows how to create sparkles on stars. Uh, so there you can learn how to use the render passes. I learned it through there and, uh, and you can learn too. Hello, Tobias. Hi, Jeff. Hey, everyone. I'm here just to show a little project that I'm working on. It's a little Christmas game that you have to eat some cookies. So let's just see. I think my camera is glitching. Let me just close it here and then restart. Just a second. Okay, I think it's okay. So I'm working on this project for the holiday spark challenge. It's a little beanie from a, from a previous workshop. And it's super cute, I think. I was just changing everything to linear here because it's a super good, uh, perfect tip. And it, it looks already better. So I was working on this beanie today and the logic of the game is, of the game is, is almost finished. You just have to click the screen. But I will add some animations. It's not uh, finished yet. So when you click the screen, it will come up some cookies. You have to eat them <laughs> and crunch them. When you crunch, you will have you will get some more points. And when you will grab the cookies, they will appear on top of the beanie. I think I think it's fun and it's cute. But I'm already working on it. And when you lose when you eat three dark cookies they pass too much time on the oven <laughs> let me try it's to very cute. it's very hard to grow uh, when the time passes it comes very very fast so you will lose very very fast <laughs> <laughs> let me just try to show you uh, there is a golden cookie as well when you had a, a certain uh, number of cookies, 
Ah, come on. It's hard to lose. Okay, I lose. So you lose when you eat three dark cookies and they just stick on your on the beanie, on the beanie on the side. And I will I will I will decide what to do when you lose if it if it will show anything or it's just like that. So I think it is. Thank you everybody. I love you so much. Uh, congratulations on being one of the hackathon winners. You're very creative. And I love this project. It's so cute. Thank you. Thank you so much, yeah. Hey, Jefferson. Uh, I think we might have one more person wanting to come on stage. So uh, I'm just going to put one more question up from the Q&A so you can answer while we um, get that set up. OK. Do you use Blender to create or modify my 3D objects? Yes. Uh, I started using, uh, I chose Blender actually because it's free and also because it has uh, an extension from Sparkier to optimize and export your objects. So it's very useful to check there if your object fits uh, inside Sparkier. You can download that extension uh, through Sparkier website. I'll put the link here later. Uh, and you can add it to your Blender so you can check if uh, the object is okay to go to Sparkyard, the scale, everything. So I think uh, Blender is the best fit right now for Sparkyard 3D objects. Any advice on promoting or filters and reaching a specific target audience? Uh, for reaching the audience, you should uh, create uh, the effects thinking in that audience. So make sure to create a concept uh, around that audience. It can be reality show fans, uh, uh, show fans, everything. It can be a filter about a singer or something. That way you will reach their audience. And also on promoting filters, uh, share with your friends, share, share in the Sparky Art community, and also uh, share other people effects, people you share yours to uh, be supportful to your friends and other creators, and I'm sure you get lots of support too. Sparky Art is about the community, so you always get support from everyone. What do you think the future of AR and Spark AR is? Where do you see it going? Uh, for me, uh, we are already in the future of Spark AR because I'm sure it changed so many lives like it did with me. So we are already living the future of Spark AR where creators can make the, a living of it and help another people to start and get it started. So I'm sure uh, there's a long road uh, for us, uh, but enjoy the present because there's a lot of stuff happening now. There's a lot of opportunities. You can work with people you never imagined you can. And it's never too late to get started and to learn. And I'm sure you get lots of support from the community, from Facebook itself. So make sure uh, to be on the Sparky Art Community Facebook group and to uh, follow creators on Instagram so you can uh, get to know more work and get involved in the community. I'm sure that in no time you, you will be making a living of it and having lots of fun like I do. Hey Jefferson, thank you so much oh. for answering those questions. Um, that was a lot of valuable information that you have from your years of experience in Spark AR. Um, and that also wraps up our workshop with you. Mm. I know, sad face. Thank you so much <laughs> for such an epic time. Judging from the chat, all the attendees had such a great time as well. It was so 
thank you for so much for being so generous with sharing your knowledge and generous with your time. Um, it was awesome to learn from you. Thank you so much. It, it was a great opportunity to share uh, some of my knowledge and to see so many amazing creators here. It was an amazing time. Uh, two hours seemed like two minutes for me. <laughs> I hope you had lots of fun. Thank you, Jeff. Awesome. And a massive, massive thank you to all of you guys who joined us for these two hours. Obviously, these workshops wouldn't be put on if it wasn't for such an engaged uh, community and you guys just willing to learn and wanting to learn this um, amazing technology. So thank you. Thank you for coming. We're going to be sending an email out after this um, early next week, and that will include a link to the YouTube so the recording will be on YouTube if you want to go and rewatch anything. It will also include links to our upcoming Spark AR holiday workshops. So this was the first of a series of three Spark AR holiday workshops. There's going to be another one on the 14th, so next Tuesday, and another one on the 16th next Thursday. Make sure you come to them. It's going to be a very similar format. We're going to be learning. We're going to be having fun. We're going to be doing creator pods. Um, Renee's dropped links in the chat, so make sure you sign up to them. Um, also, if you wanted to share your effects but didn't have time to come up onto stage today, please pop your effects in the Spark AR Creator Facebook group. We're going to put a link into the chat as well. Um, and we would love to have you in the community and share your effects there. We'll be able to give feedback in the Facebook group. Um, finally, again, massive thank you to Jefferson. That was truly, truly epic. And it was such a pleasure learning from him and all his insights that he's had from working with these amazing brands. So um, I'll see you at the next Spark AR holiday workshops. And remember to sign up to the holiday competition and submit your effects for that chance to win big prize money. I'll see you soon.